A pair of divers compete in the ECAC Diving Championships for the first time since 2000. Hello, I'm Jake Smolinski. And I'm Anna Gomez. Men's basketball closes out their regular season on a pair of exciting and well-earned wins. You're watching LaSalle TV's Home for Explorer Athletics, Sportsline. Welcome to Sportsline. We've got a host of exciting sports action this week as men's basketball wraps up their regular season on a high note. And later, sports talk darling Zach, Zach Raninsky joins us on desk for some exploring headlines. But first, let's take a look at what went down this past week for our athletes. So, men's track sent a contingent of runners to compete at the Fast Track Invitational on Saturday, February 27th in Staten Island, New York. Sophomores Chris Sanders and Nick Smart competed in the 800 meter race, finishing in 5th and 9th place respectively. Other explorers competing included junior Stephen Lewandowski, who finished the mile in 22nd place with a time of 4 minutes and 17 seconds. And finally, sophomores Chris Berry and Fran Feruzzi ran in the 3000 meter, crossing the finish line in 10th and 13th place in a field of 41 runners. The women's track and field team hit the track on Staten Island on the 27th as well. Amber Jenkins stole the show in the 400 meter final, topping the field with a time of 59.47 seconds. Megan Connell grabbed another first place win for LaSalle in the 5,000 meter race, where she finished in just about 17 and a half minutes. In the long jump, Kalia Miller placed second with a, time, with a leap of 5.36 meters. Kate Conville also earned a second place finish for the Explorers in the 1,000 meter finals, pulling in at just about three minutes. Men swimming and diving sent Dylan Urasitz and CJ Gimple to the ECAC Diving Championships in Annapolis, Maryland at the Naval Academy. And this is the first time LaSalle sent divers to the championship since 2000. So Urasitz placed 19th in the 1 meter with a score of 116.7. Senior CJ Gimple also competed in the 1 meter dive with a score of 261.45 in the prelims for third place. In the finals, Gimple placed fifth with a score of 269 even. Your assets and Gipple will stay on the road to compete in the NCAA championships on March 5th. Colgate swept both the men's and women's tennis teams on Sunday, February 28th. For the men, Mark Robinson and Meredith Christian dropped their doubles round 6-2 to two before putting up a real fight in their respective single rounds. Robinson versed Colgate's Noah Rosenblatt in two rounds, losing 6-3 to three and 6-4. to four. Christian went up against Colgate's Nick Lobb, who won the first round. Christian fired back in the second, taking it 7-5, but Lobb wrangled the points to take the single round 6-4. This marks another sweeping loss for the 0-7 tennis team. And the women did not fare much better. In just their fifth matchup, the Explorers dropped the 0-7 decision after a brutal onslaught from Colgate squad. Ali Santorelli and Jayla Smith teamed up in the first doubles round, falling 6-0, and Catherine Thomas and Ashley Anderson unfortunately echoed the sweep. Santorelli went on to verse Colgate's Lauren Highland in the singles, where she put up three points in the round, but could not compete with Highland. And despite a positive outlook for the baseball team in their matchup against Elon, the three-game series instead became another heartbreaking weekend. In Game 1, the Explorers had a chance at the top of the eighth. The Blue and Gold scored twice, and they had the tying run at the plate, but they failed to capitalize, resulting in a 7-4 loss. In Game 2, LaSalle was leading through the 8th inning, but Elon had a late rally, scoring 6 runs and crushed LaSalle 7-6. In the final series, or in the series finale, the men took the lead in the top of the second. It was not long until the bottom of the frame came along and Elon took it from there. From that point on, Elon never looked back and won 10-3 against LaSalle. The baseball team is now 0-7 on the season. And softball suffered two shutouts in their first matches at the USC Upstate Tournament in South Carolina. LaSalle fell to Ohio and USC, both with final scores of 0-8 and eight on February 28th. On Saturday, things got brighter when the Explorers opened their doubleheader versus Virginia and Furman. Again, uh, against Virginia, LaSalle gave up a run to Virginia's Katie Park in the first inning. But for the Blue and Gold, Michelle Haggerty found her way back home after getting hit by a pitch when Suzanne Swinicki singled up the middle. 
Then in the second inning, the bases loaded. Sophomore Angelina Rafids uh, sent a fielder's choice to second, sacrificing Bridget McGee on the base and allowing Erica Reese to get home. Then, Haggerty hit a sack fly RBI, sending Kristen Martin back home. By then, LaSalle led 3-2, but the Blue and Gold gave up four runs later, which solidified a 6-3 loss. Unfortunately, the last game in the series panned out like the first few, losing 12-0 in five innings against Furman. The Explorers went hitless for the game against the Monster Paladin batting ensemble. Men's basketball had a huge turnout for last Saturday. It was the last game of the season. For the February 27th gold out, the Explorers clinched an emotional seventh win against George Mason. So let's take a look. In just the first 10 minutes of play, George Mason earned six points, including a three-pointer from Otis Livingston, who became the Patriot to watch all game. Playing 37 minutes, Livingston shot 50% and was an all-around offensive force. But he was no match to the LaSalle starters. While Mason was still leading, Amar Stukes, with the ball still in hand, took a fall. But he sent it rolling down the court to Jordan Price for a fast break layup that we barely caught on camera. With Mason still in the lead, a Jordan Price three-pointer brought the Explorers to a 17-16 score. Then, just seconds later, Johnny Schuler missed his layup, but it opened up the rebound for Tony Washington to then make a dunk that sent fans to their feet. Then, Sacknia came in for his trademark four minutes and boosted the Explorers another six points. With less than ten minutes in the half, Johnny Schuler dove for a ball that was going out of bounds. But he ended up taking a leap over the boards and taking a few people out with him. He actually managed to get the ball to Price, but Price immediately dropped it to see if his teammate was all right. Luckily, Schuler was okay, and the Explorers finished up the half with a 37-29 lead over the Patriots. Going into the second, Mason came out swinging, closing a 10-point deficit to three before a Schuler three-pointer woke the Explorers back up, and they maintained a comfortable lead through the end of the game. Very few turnovers and a rallying offensive effort sent the Explorers that extra mile, and even though the last few minutes sizzled, the Explorers rode on to that 76-68 victory. How about that Schuler wipeout? One of the greatest things I've seen all season. Anyway, after the game, Sports Talk Billy and friend of Sportsline Tyler Harper stuck around to give us his thoughts on the game. Brendan Rigney joins in on this men's basketball post-game pre-interview. LaSalle beating George Mason 76 to 68. Tyler Harper here with me on the court. Uh, Tyler, the Explorers are improving their record to 7 in 20 on the season. Not ideal, but um, better than what we could have hoped two weeks ago. Uh, right off the bat, Tyler, who do you think was the MVP for this game for the Explorers? Uh, despite 24 points from Jordan Price, I'm going to Amar Stukes here. 12 points, 6 assists and 6 rebounds, 3 steals. Really from the start, Amar was the energy guy for this team today. He's feeling better about his shooting and, uh, you know, and I've always thought he could be a really good player and fortunately at this point he's, he's starting to, to make his work and our patience worth it. You know, I always thought he could be really good. Diving after loose balls on the court, getting the assist, being helping being a true point guard that we thought he really could be. And after the game, Coach G really ha had a good analysis of Amar, saying that college was an adjustment for him because at LaSalle College High School, he was a standout and there was no question. So he had a lot, a lot of hype coming here. He had to make adjustments, and now he finally has been showing that he can make those adjustments, and he really shined today. Uh, Yevgen uh, Sakniak was only in for four minutes of the whole game. Uh, we were expecting something like this. He's recovering from an unnamed illness. But in those four minutes, he got four points. Tyler, do you think this is a snapshot of what to come, or is it more teams aren't prepared for him because he's only in games for four minutes or less? Well, LaSalle fans would like to hope that it's a sign of things to come because going forward, Yevgen, again, uh, he had to sit out the previous season due to uh, transfer rules, but he's able to pick up the game slowly but surely. And ever since he's come back from that illness, he's really had some good games on off offense at one point in a game, putting up tw close to 20 points. So if Yevgen can keep this going uh, next year, once they have more depth, he'll be just another uh, valuable asset, whether that's off the bench or in the starting lineup for the Explorers. The season isn't going as, as they were hoping for the Explorers, but uh, this, this win at the end of the season could could matter. What do you think this game meant to the team? Uh, this is a very emotional game. They know what their situation is. Everybody knows that the record isn't what they hoped it would be. And Coach G said a million times that he should have prepared his team to have a little more depth and a little more uh, experience this season. 
but they wanted to go out and win today because today was a big day, a packed house at the Gola for the gold out for both uh, Explorer fans and alumni. Uh, a lot of energy in the building from the opening tip all the way to the end ending buzzer. So, of course, this meant a lot and also meant a lot because uh, Jordan Price uh, came from a funeral of a, a Aston relative today and Coach G said that's never happened for him in his coaching tenure. I've never had a player uh, go to the funeral of a family member in the morning of the game and come back and lead his team to a great win. Uh, it really demonstrated within their beliefs today and Jordan and his teammates are uh, uh, were among them. So it was really, as tough it is, as it was, it was also uplifting and motivation. So for him to come out and put up 24 points and have everybody, including Amar Stukes, follow his lead, I think there was a lot of emotion on that court today for the Explorers. Uh, in, in the presser, Coach G said that he uh, essentially mortgaged the future for this team. We mortgaged the future, uh, the present for the future a little bit with all the kids sitting out. So we're getting better. They're learning how to win. And uh, I, I think uh, people are going to be pleasantly surprised at, at what we do in the future. Uh, what do you think he meant by that, Tyler? Well, he has some transfers who couldn't play this year due to the NCAA transfer rules, uh, such as uh, B.J. Johnson and Pookie Powell, who are really going to be a strong force for the Explorers next year. Uh, but with them not being able to play and with certain players being out due to either sickness or like Rohan Brown having a knee injury, he didn't have a lot of bodies to go off of with this team. So because of that, at, there were some games where the Explorers were simply outmanned and it got the better of them. So in that sense, he mortgaged the future a little too much, but it just means that in the future, they're going to have more depth. They're going to have more scoring power, they're going to have more experience and versatility. So be on the lookout for the LaSalle Explorers next year. Yeah, bright future and a lot of hope for the Explorers next year. Uh, back to you guys at the desk. After the triumphant victory against George Mason, the men's basketball team got to play their last home game of the season against St. Louis on Wednesday, March 2nd. LaSalle fans got to say goodbye to seniors O.J. Lewis and Sportsline alum Rohan Brown as part of the senior night tradition. Right from the tip-off, both Lewis and Brown scored clutch points in the opening minutes of the game. However, it was Cleon Roberts who stole the show with a dynamic presence on the court as he tallied 23 points. Scoring every angle of the court, he made six, thre six threes that forced the Billiken defense to watch the perimeter, allowing Jordan and Tony Washington to cut to the inside. Uh, solid performances from Stuke and Schuler wrapped up the win 76-68, to bringing the Explorers record to 8 and 20. And the women's basketball team closed out the regular season on the road at the University of Massachusetts on Saturday, February 27th. The Explorers had previous success against the Minutewomen, having beaten them over two weeks earlier. That success did not continue into the second meeting. The team held their own in the first quarter and only managed to trial by eight heading into the halftime break. The second half was dismal for LaSalle, though. The Blue and Gold gave up 50 points in the final two quarters and couldn't compete with a determined UMass team. The Explorers dropped the game 80-57, to ending their season with a 5-24 record overall, their worst season of all time. Amy Griffin led Explorers in the game with 15 points. On March 2nd, the women's team played in the first round of the Atlantic 10 tournament in Richmond against who else? The University of Massachusetts once again. The Explorers were ranked as the 14th seed and the Minute Women were the 11th. Things got off to a decent start for the Explorers, holding their own for much of the first half. LaSalle went into the break similar to the last game, down by nine. But yet again, the second half was disheartening for LaSalle. The team fell behind as much as 18 before they began a comeback to cut the deficit to as low as eight. Even with a 27-point game from junior Micaiah Owens, the Explorers just could not compete with the Minutewomen, dropping the game 81-65, marking the official end to a tough 2015-2016 campaign. Now, on to some awards for our athlete, LaSalle athletes, golfer Andrew Reynolds nabbed another A-10 Rookie of the Week honor after his performance at the Atlantic 10 match play event. The freshman went two and one against George Mason, St. Bonaventure, and George Washington. The A-10 also named women's basketball's Amy Griffin to the all-conference third team. The Explorer led the league with 17.9 points per game, including a 33-point performance in LaSalle's win over St. Joe's last month. Griffin also averaged 6.1 rebounds and 2.1 assists per game and scored 20 points or more in this in nine games this season. But now, uh, here for some exploring headlines, we have oh, Sports Talk Darling, our <laughs> darling, our grizzled Flyers correspondent, 
Yeah. Zach Ronitsky, how are you doing today? I am doing good. You know, I just talked some flyers earlier, so talking some LaSalle sports now. So. Dang, perfect. Yeah. All right, well, let's get to it. Here on Sportsline, we like to keep you up to date, not only on current explorers, but also those who have worn the blue and gold jerseys in the past. With that said, recent men's soccer player and soon-to-be graduate Joe Farrell has signed a contract to play professionally for the Rochester Rhinos in the year ahead. Farrell was also a Soccer 6 All-Star for the third straight time this year. LaSalle Athletics announced that the vacant post on director of director will be filled on March 9th by interim director Bill Bradshaw, the current Lower University director, returns to LaSalle after his previous stint ended in 1986. Since then, Bradshaw has worked at DePaul and Temple Universities. During his tenure here, Bradshaw helped the school boast, boast a 90% graduation rate for student athletes, along with 28 conference championships for Explorer Athletics. Well, yeah, thank you, Zach. This is very informative. Well, that brings us to our first commercial break, but stick around because we've got Jake's exclusive with swimmer Justin Hughes on how the season fared for him. So stick yeah. around. <laughs> It's about putting others first. It's doing your best at whatever you do. It's about being honest with yourself, with everything. It's all of these. It's more. It's commitment. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Welcome back. And as the winter sports be just are wrapping up, I was lucky enough to catch up with one of our favorite swimmers from the men's swimming and dive team, Justin Hughes. And after the incredible team performance for third overall at the A-10s, our segment on the sidelines details how the mindset of LaSalle swimming changed over the past season and what it really means to swim as a team in its purest sense. So anyway, take a look. I'm Justin Hughes okay. and I'm a senior on LaSalle's main swim and dive team. Into. Coming in, everyone was pretty motivated. We one. had a new coaching staff. Awesome, everyone was pretty um, excited, you know, and ready to get going because yeah, you know, we learned a lot from our previous season. We started off with a very hard training base, and um, that wore out a lot of guys. And you know, we didn't, um, you know, we yeah, we I wouldn't say we struggled, but it was tough. Yeah, it was tough in the regular season, but because we. We hit the base so hard and so on. We rested very well for our championship meet. Last year's 18s, the wheels kind of fell off. You know, we, um, I think we went, we were on such a high for so long and, you know, to maintain that, you know, demanded an incredible amount of pressure. And I would just say, as a team, we put a lot of pressure on each other that 18. And like, you know, the atmosphere, I remember talking to a few of the seniors, some of the juniors, the atmosphere before 18s of 2015 in the locker room was intense. Like there were no jokes a few weeks before. There was no, like everything was serious. And compared, I think, you know, hats off to the team, everyone, everyone kind of realized, okay, that, you know, we, we're not a team that responds well to a lot of like, and, like seriously intense, like pressure and like that sort of atmosphere. So we thought, and you know, our head coach even like, you know, noticed that as well. And we thought, okay, you know what, this year as upperclassmen and from a coaching staff standpoint, you know, we're just gonna like kind of sit back like, Seri be serious and focused, but you know, keep it lighthearted and you know, crack a few jokes. And 
as a result, you know, the banter was still flying around the locker rooms and so on and so forth, and that was pretty good for the team. Initially, like, you know, being on, um, I was on that relay in, the, in 2015 when we got silver, and um, it was kind of one of those things that you knew the team, like everyone kind of thought the team was going to get top three. And it was like, ah, oh, well, you know, not going to get that medal. Ah. But um, when, when they went on and like we watched them, Fabian Bergman went in, awesome, awesome hundred back, was in there, was in the mix. Then Johan Roth dove in and um, still same thing, you know, right up there with everyone. Cameron Fadley took a lead and we were all thinking, oh, geez, you know what, we could win this thing and we weren't expecting it. And it was just, everyone was just losing their minds and going ape escape and Jakob daft and he just held the line and we, we lost it. It was, it was awesome. There was no, there was no like, yeah, I would say that was like my idea of what a team is, you know, everyone just, it, everyone was just pulling for these guys and going crazy and on the bus on the way home, it was just, it was phenomenal. You know, but I was very fortunate to kind of join a team that was very, very welcoming, and um, it's a team that encourages individuality. And you know, like I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen we have a lot of individuals on our team, um, very unique people, um, and just the whole chemistry of the team was so good and you know when when I touched when I touched for my final race in uh, in the 4x100 free relay it was kind of it was a lot of mixed emotions you know mostly you know a lot of happiness like oh yeah I'm done like you know like a 12 year chapter of my life has come to an end you know and now I've now I've got to go out and find a job pretty much after I graduate but at the same time it was, you know, it was sad just because, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to uh, wake up on those terrible cold mornings and, you know, go listen to guys sling insults at each other in the locker room and, you know, carry on like that. And, you know, that, I would say that to me was, will be the best, like, among some of my best memories. You know, the, the men's swim team anyway has a seriously, seriously stud lineup. And they definitely, they definitely gonna make a mark. They're hungry, especially after this season. You know, a few of the guys are already back in the pool training, so we'll see. I'll, it'll be interesting to watch from the sidelines. There is plenty of LaSalle sports action this upcoming week, so let us highlight the games ahead. A few athletes from track and field will head to Boston for the IC4A championships on March 5th and 6th. Then they'll take a trip down south for the NCAA indoor track and field championships starting March 11th. The men's tennis has a matchup against St. Louis on March 4th, and maybe this will be the game that will break the tennis team's 0-7 losing record. Men's basketball has their final game, regular game of the season, March 5th against UMass before the Atlantic 10 Championship starting March 9th. Earlier in the season, the men and men beat LaSalle 74 to 67. And women's lacrosse really starts to heat up with a pair of games against Robert Morris and UMBC. The Explorers will take on the 0 and 3 Colonials on Tuesday, March 8th, and the 3 and 1 Retrievers on March 12th. Men's and women's rowing will sail the Schuylkill for the first time in 2016 in a tri meet against Drexel and Villanova on March 12th. On Monday, March 14th, men's golf will compete in the Cape Fear Intercollegiate in North Carolina. The two day 54 hole tournament will see the swings of 13 schools, including Delaware, Robert Morris, and North Dakota State. Softball has two Southern tournaments coming up the UFC Spring Fling in Orlando, Florida, against the likes of LIU Brooklyn and South Dakota starting March 4th, and the March 11th Liberty Classic, where the women will take on Liberty University and Rhode Island. And baseball has had a rough losing record to open the season, but they will aim to turn it around this weekend in the three game series against Presbyterian College. Kevin Cook has the deets in this week's marquee matchup. 
Hello and welcome to another edition of the Marquee Matchup. I'm Kevin Cook and I'm going to tell you which Explorer matchups you will want to watch out for March 4th through the 6th. The baseball team has gotten off to a rough start as they have dropped their first seven games. It has been very difficult for the team because of the cold weather up here at 20th and Omni. However, that should not be a problem as they will be traveling down to South Carolina for a three-game series against Presbyterian College this weekend. The Presbyterian Blue Hose has gotten off to a better start as they have won four out of their last six. If the Explorers want to win this series this weekend, they will need contributions from a couple of players. One of those players is freshman third baseman Jarrett Malone. Malone is leading the Explorers with a 375 batting average. The Explorers will need this rookie and his hot bat in this series. Another player that needs to have a good series for the Explorers is senior shortstop Colin McGowan. The senior is the leadoff batter for the Blue and Gold, and he will be the catalyst for the Explorers this weekend. But a few players don't make the game. Strategy does. The first of the key points that the Explorers need is focus, is to focus on pitching. The Presbyterian College hitters have been crushing the ball to start the year off as they have combined for a batting average above 300. The Explorers pitchers will have to keep bats at bay to succeed in this series. Another key point the Blue and Gold need to focus on is getting off to a good start. The Explorers have given up too many runs in the first couple of innings and they are always playing from behind. If the Explorers are able to get off to a better start, they will have a better chance of winning the game. The Explorers baseball team heads down south, heads down to South Carolina to verse Presbyterian College Friday, March 4th through Sunday, March 6th. Will this be the weekend that the Explorers can finally get a series win? For Sportsline, I'm Kevin Cook. Go Explorers. All right, thank you, Kevin. But now it is time for Picks of the Week, my favorite segment. So number one, I'm calling for a win for men's basketball versus UMass. You know, we've just experienced some serious, just middle of the road, A-10 success as we're just tearing up the end of the season. I'm excited to see what's gonna happen as we go into the A-10 championships. So you know what? We're gonna nail it. We're taking it on. We're beating them. All right, <laughs> number two, I am calling for Baseball. Baseball. Men's baseball versus Presbyterian. And they're a Southern team. They've already played 29 games. I'm saying that we're going to be able to pull this together, uh, actually get a good start to our season. Robert's been heating up. And then finally, for pick number three, I'm calling the IC4A Track Invitational. And I'm saying five top fives. We got Hur Gurr and Christian Sanders, all, you know, really competing at a high level. And Forbury just brought home a gold at the A10 Championships. So it's going to be wild to see how the season just turns out and how the Explorers compete. That's yeah. really exciting. Thank you, Jake. That just about wraps it up for us this week. If you can't make it out to see the marquee matchup, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. And keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com and by following us on Twitter at SportslineLTV. We post game updates and sneak peeks into the upcoming show. So also check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TV. We welcome you to send us your thoughts and suggestions about the show on either website. For Kevin, Zach, and our Sportsline team, I'm Anna Gomez. And I'm Jacob, son of Isaac and Rebecca. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you at the game.